Rolling Dogs scheme is a headway in the Ipswich and East Suffolk um, project in partnership with Hosley Bay Prison, which is an open prison, and Felix Day Blue Cross, who looks after dogs. I was been asked several times this weekend, where are my dogs? My board of directors didn't know until a few months ago that actually I'm petrified of dogs. So there's no way I was going to travel from Ipswich to Nottingham with dogs, but I have brought two. <laughs> <laughs> I've got and and dext and Rex. and they're nothing like our brainy dogs I'm afraid <laughs> as I said <laughs> we work with rescue dogs so our dogs are unlikely to be labradogs they're dogs that people have had and no longer can look after so they've been given to Felix Day Blue Cross the Blue Cross then vet them and they work out which dogs they think will be suitable for our scheme. We have prisoners come from Hosley Bay, which as I said is a local open prison. That means prisoners can come out on day release under special licence to work with us at Headway to train the dogs. And we follow the Blue Cross Life Skills for Dogs training so that those dogs can be well trained companion dogs to any client who's got a neurological condition. Most of those are actually Headway clients. I first thought of the scheme when I read a book called Endel, which some of you might have read. It's written by Alan Patron, who himself has a brain injury, um, sustained in the first Iraq war. And when I was reading about Endel, Endel was actually doing very similar things to what you've just seen. And I thought I really should do something for the clients at Ipswich because so many people could benefit from having a dog who could do this sort of thing. I didn't know where to go with it or what to do with it, but I sort of filed that away in my head somewhere and thought one day I will do something like that. Then one night after a busy day at Headway, I put the television on and I was channel, channel hopping and came across a channel I've never heard of before because I don't watch much telly called Dave and on there was a programme called Bondi Vet and Bondi Vet was going into the local prison and he was helping prisoners look after dogs who had been trained to be rehabilitation dogs to people who got disabilities. What I later found out was that Bondi is next to Ipswich in Australia. And I thought anything Ipswich Australia can do, Ipswich UK can do as well. So I then thought, there's my link. I need to write to the local prison and see if they will help me. I wrote to the local prison and by coincidence, the chap who responded used to live next to me about 20 years ago and I used to work with his wife. So I had a natural link then. I was then beginning to think this project is meant. I don't read doggy stories, I don't watch television, and the person in the prison is going to help me is somebody I know. So I felt that we had to go forward. But then how are we going to fund it? I was already very busy at Headway. I couldn't possibly take on another project myself. We needed somebody who could coordinate the project for us. We had no spare money and we couldn't just take it out of um, natural funds. So we decided to get together a steering group. We had a local vet on the group. We also consulted with Blind Dogs from the Blind. They came and helped us. We had a vet who does research and of course people from the prison and uh, Felix W. Cross and myself. We formed a steering group. We met for about a year considering what we were going to do, how we were going to put the project together and how we were going to get the funding. We decided to go for a lottery funding, a special pot of money called People's Millions. That year, last year, it was actually Jubilee People's Millions because it's Jubilee year. We were fortunate because that meant there was an extra £10,000 up for grabs, so we really got our time and right on that one. What the lottery look for in People's Millions is an interesting, unusual project. They get fed up with village hall type projects. And of course, when we put our project in, it was very different to anything they'd seen before. And immediately, all the lottery officers were saying, we really like this project. But it's not up to the lottery, it goes down to public vote. What happens is, they send the local regional ITV company down to film your project, and you get two minutes of airtime on the television. So after we've been shortlisted, and after an officer from Newcastle Lottery had come down and spoken to me in the prison about brainy dogs, we then had a day at Headway when a film crew from ITV came and filmed Headway. I've been at Headway for 10 years, and I have to say that was one of the best days we ever had. 
We had prisoners out on special license that day, walking dogs in the community. We had dogs which were staff dogs or dogs from the Blue Cross. And they spent a whole day filming that and filming our clients. They then condensed that into a two minutes film on regional television. But that in itself was a prize to get two minutes on regional television at tea time promoting headway was fantastic. And I have to say that our profile has gone up tremendously since we started doing this project because of the programmes we've been on on ITV. We knew that we were shortlisted and we knew that we were going to go head to head with one other charity and one of us would get £60,000. The odds were quite good. We also knew that if we failed, at the end of the week, the best um, reserve one would also get 60,000. So it was a lot higher than a 50-50 chance that we'd get 60,000. But we had to get people to vote for us. Now obviously because we were in partnership, not only were Headway supporters going to vote for us, but so were the um, supporters of Felix Day Blue Cross, and so were the prisoners. But we produced a leaflet, which was ready, telling people what we were doing, and we informed people to look out for another leaflet and another email that would be delivered on a particular day. It was actually a Tuesday in June last year. And the reason we asked them to look out on that day was because at 5 a.m. that day, the number people had to phone to vote for us would be released. It would be printed in the Daily Mirror and it would be on the National um, Lottery website. So 5 a.m. that morning, I went to the local garage, bought a Daily Mirror, went into Headway, put in the magic number, produced the leaflet, got the photocopier going, producing loads and loads of leaflets, emailed everybody we could think of. Then when people came into Headway about 7 o'clock time, they were picking bundles of leaflets up to take into work, to take to school gates, to take wherever they could to try and get people to vote for us. The prison were very good. They have lots of prisoners working in charity shops around the region, so they were taking them to charity <laughs> shops, so we had lots of people voting for us. I also have contacts with the local radio station in that Mark Murphy and I went to school together, so I pulled on the old school tie, and I was on Mark's radio show at 7 o'clock that morning. So at 5 o'clock I was printing leaflets, 7 o'clock I was on the local radio. Mark did us proud because on the hour, every hour, he repeated that interview. So again, Headway was getting profile. People knew what Headway was doing, they knew we were asking for their votes, and people started twittering for us and putting it on YouTube, and the votes were coming in. Then we had our two minutes of fame on the television. People were voting for us, and at midnight, the, the lines closed. That was it. So if we hadn't done anything enough by midnight, it was tough luck. We'd already been told that the next day, if the lottery phoned us, it would be to say that we hadn't won, and that was, that was tough. If ITV phoned, then it meant it would be good news. But what ITV don't tell you is that you've won. They give it to you in sort of code. They said to me, we've got a cameraman in the area, can you get some dogs together? And I said, well, it's going to be a bit difficult to get some dogs together. Have we won? And they said, we don't know yet. And I thought, yes, you do know, but you're not telling me. The lottery got worried by that and then phoned me and said, for goodness sake, Helen, go and get some dogs. So we got some dogs together and the TV cameras came again and they filmed us being um, awarded our big cheque of 60,000. So for two nights on the trot, we were on ITV at tea time, raising the profile of Headway. We also had um, 60,000 pounds in our purse. I had been given media training by ITV so I could actually put together our filming. Luke told me that was a prize in itself and I shouldn't be so greedy about the 60,000 as well, but there you go. Um, and so then we got 60,000, great, but the next day the project had to start. We had targets to meet, we had to appoint a coordinator, because that's what we said in the bid, to run it. So already the job advert was done, the job description was done, so that very next day all of that went to press, all of that started to happen. We had, it's a 12 month project, so we come to the end of our 12 months, which will end in September. We have to have five dogs to be companion dogs, so they're well trained pets, trained by the prisoners, following the Blue Cross life skills for dogs. We had to get five dogs trained, we have now done that, in fact we've done seven. We wanted to bring some dogs into the centre, so people who couldn't have dogs at home could still benefit by the project. We weren't allowed to call them pack dogs, because that's a painted name. So we called them stroke dogs. 
but they are like pack dogs, they come into our centre. And we had to have 12 prisoners trained. We've just had our 12th prisoner. So those prisoners are gaining expertise by coming into headway. They're learning about brain injury. They're learning actually it's not a good idea to go and beat people up over the head because they have a brain injury and they've now seen the effects of that. They've learned to turn up on time and to do as they're told. This is our very first brainy dog. And as you see, nothing like Anne and Drex. Um, it's Duna. It's our very first dog. She went to our first client in January and she's still very successful in the family home. Her owner had no communi communication skills. He was actually lying in bed doing nothing all day. He's now getting out of bed. He's going for walks. Okay, he's in his wheelchair, but his wife's taking him out. The dog's going with them. He's learned to say, sit, stay, come, that sort of thing. So he's already getting some outcomes by having Duna. These are the rest of the gang. As you can see, um, a wide range of different dogs, including a Staffy. The Blue Cross were very keen that we had a Staffy because Staffy gets bad press. He's actually a lovely dog called Faith. Um, his um, new mummy wanted to be a mummy but couldn't be and she threatened all sorts of things that she would be. Um, so she's now got the dog, so her maternal instinct she's now had, um, displaying with the dog. So she's no longer desperate to have a child of her own. She's getting up and about. I've seen her in town on a Sussy with her dog. They look great together. <coughs> She's also got mental health problems. She hasn't been admitted to the mental health unit since she's had her dogs. So that's excellent. Um, some of those are stroke dogs, though, which come into the centre. You will note that I have cut off the prisoners' heads. That's not because I'm a bad photographer, although I am. It's because we're not allowed to take photographs of prisoners, so um, I've just got their legs in there. So what does the dog mean to the person with a brain injury? Well, I think we know most people with a brain injury lose their, their friends. And that was one thing that was really concerning me. Without fail, nearly all our clients at Ipswich Headway have lost their friends. Dogs give unconditional love. They're there all the time. It keeps them company. It keeps them safe. It gives them something to love, something to be responsible for. And we're seeing really good outcomes in those areas. Having a dog in the centre, actually, I think our centre has a huge different feel to it now, even for those of us who are petrified of dogs. They're there, the ones that come to the centre to help the clients who can't have a dog at home, so they receive pet therapy, they improve their communication, they're taking the dogs out for walks, so it's now quite natural around Headway to see clients walking dogs with support. Um, as I've said before, the outcomes are reason to get out in the morning, give them hand therapy, they're grooming the dogs, they're helping to feed them, they're giving commands, they're going for exercise and they've got a companion who doesn't judge. This is Margaret, she can't have a dog at home, but she's in the brainy dog office, which is just inside the front door of Headway, purposely put there, so people who don't want to be involved with the dogs don't have to be, and also so the prisoners aren't walking through the complete centre, they just go in the front door into that one room. Clients are only allowed in that room when the prisoners are out walking other dogs, or when the brainy dog coordinator is in there, that keeps everybody safe. So Margaret's hand grooming this dog, and as you can see by her facial expression, she's really enjoying herself. This is Vicky with her dog. Vicky has a special attachment to her wheelchair because she lives independently, and she self-propels her wheelchair. And the Blue Cross were quite concerned, how could she self-propel and hold a dog's lead? So we've done some research, went online and found a special lead where we can do that. So Vicky's dog was trained to walk beside that wheelchair on that lead before she had it. So as well as having the training that they'd normally get to be obedient, this dog had extra training. The positive outcome from this dog is that Vicky also suffers from seizure. And although we didn't train the dog to do this, when Vicky's about to go into seizure, he paws her. He continually goes like that and he'll go like that until she comes round. So when the dog starts doing that, she knows she's about to go into seizure so she can get herself safe. As I say, she's living independently, so she can make sure she needs to do whatever she needs to do before she goes into seizure. Vicky actually wasn't a headway partner, a um, headway client. She was referred to us by a clinician who heard about brainy dogs. So it's helped us to help additional people we wouldn't normally be helping. Um, she possibly wouldn't have come to headway if it hadn't been for that referral. Another dog that's come into the centre, as you can see, another wheelchair user, um, the client really enjoying it. She came to Headway purposely because she heard about the Brainy Dog um, project. So what about the prisoners? Because they are key. They have been naughty boys. They are in open prison. They do come on licence. If they break that licence, they go back to closed or they have um, their sentence extended. 
We have actually had two prisoners who have let us down. One left headway sober, ended up at the prison drunk, so somewhere en route he got hold of alcohol, so he had five years extended onto his sentence. So they don't muck about if they're naughty. So they know that, and now the other prisoners know that if they don't do as they're told, they're going to be back in clothes, which they all hate. Um, but those that are behaving themselves, it has given them a chance to pay back. They are quite proud. They're walking around um, Ipswich with Brony Dog t-shirts on. The public stop them and say, I've heard of various other dog schemes, what's Brony Dogs? And the prisoners are very good at talking about headway and what we're doing. So again, that's raising our profile. All the dogs have got special um, bandanas they wear as well. It's given them a chance to prove that they can do something worthwhile, so it's um, improved their self-esteem and confidence. Um, it's given them a chance to have a dog to love, because quite a lot of the prisoners have had um, awful stories of their own to tell. And there's a chance for them to love a dog, and it gives them a second chance. In fact, two, of the three, two or three prisoners have actually now been released back into community, and are still in contact with the project, because it's a project they love, um, and they're coming back as volunteers, so it's been quite successful for those prisoners. We too rely on volunteer boarders. What happens is the Blue Cross say they've got a dog that they think would be suitable for the scheme. Ha um, we then look for a volunteer boarder to look after the dogs overnight. So they are better, a bit like canine pets to do. Um, they are making sure the house is suitable and the boarders are suitable. Then the boarders take uh, over a dog and they look after it while we're training it. So the dog is with them of an evening and of a weekend. The boarders bring them to headway first thing in the morning and they collect them last thing at night. So they're with the boarders overnight, the weekend, and in headway under the prisoner's control during the day. Obviously, with a three way partnership and a unique project, you're going to have some problems. Obviously, all the partners got different priorities. My concern is the person with the brain injury. The prison, they're really concerned about the prisoners, and the Blue Cross are concerned about the, the um, dogs. But we have actually had a really good working relationship. I don't think we've ever argued over something, we've debated things, but we've had a really good working relationship and they're people we wouldn't normally have thought of working with. So that's really helped us. We've got targets which we have to meet and at some point during the year we have been a bit concerned, will we meet those targets? And I think when doing any funding application you have to make sure they're targets that you can meet. We are meeting those now. But we have been in a goldfish bowl. The media are very interested in this project, which has its positive things. But when it hasn't been going so well, we have to remember that we are also being monitored by the public and we are using public money. So that's been a little bit scary that we've had so much interest. And finding volunteer boarders hasn't always been um, easy, but we have managed to get boarders eventually. But there's been lots of positives. So we've been on the television, our profile has certainly gone up, we've also been in the newspaper quite a lot. Alistair Renton, the chair and I, were invited to Buckingham Palace in May, and on the back of Brainy Dogs we went to a garden party, so again that raised the profile, another reason to go to press, and we had a very nice day there. We now have new partners to help us in other areas of headway. For instance, we recently moved to a new rehab centre and before we left our old centre, prisoners came and decorated it for us. We wouldn't have thought of doing that before. So we're using prisoners in other ways. They're also doing a web new website for our Dom Care wow. service. We've been, had increased referrals because it's another project that can interest people and increased public awareness. We've been invited to a Vets Open Day we wouldn't normally have a chance to go to Vets Open Day to talk about brain injury, but we're able to on this occasion. We're also going to Suffolk Dogs Day later on in the month, which will attract at least 10,000 people. So it's 10,000 people that we can talk to about <coughs> headway and brain injury that we wouldn't normally get a chance to do. Our clients in their craft section are now making a 3D uh, island, so we can take that to the dog day. It's a, a guessing game, guess where the dogs buried the bone. So that's given the craft department something to do and hopefully we'll raise some money. If you have any questions, I'm around um, most of the weekend. Alistair Renton, our chair, is also around. He was the one who landed me to do this um, talk. If you want to know anything, please ask Alistair or myself. We'll be around for the rest of the day. We've also, it's on our website, it's on our Facebook, and it's on YouTube. So if you want to find out more, then please talk to me, either about the project, about partnership um, working, or about going for People's Millions funding. Thank you.